today I got this book from Enchant, and it's called Enchant Mischievous. So let's get mischievous, I think. So let's get reading. Oh. A long time ago, even before his beard had turned white, a young Santa Claus flew high above the sleeping world, searching for the perfect place to create uh, to create Christmas Town. On a crisp, clear evening, he sur as he circled around the North Pole, a twinkling light caught his eye. He, as he came closer, he discovered that it wasn't a single light but a whole forest of magical lights that danced and sparkled as if they were alive. Santa knew that this place was special. It was a living source of visible magic. He had found enchant. Christmas was just around the corner, and the little town at the North Pole was buzzing with excitement. All of the elves were busy decorating Christmas town in sh shoveling snow or wrapping gifts and shopping for the holiday feast. Everyone was caught up, with, uh, up in the busyness of the holiday season. The cobblestone streets had been turned for it into a winter wonderland. Wreaths hung on every door. Garlands were dropped from each lamppost and twinkling lights had been strung along the snowy rooftops for the frosted window planes. planes. Elves, had, elves could, see, see, could be seen decorating fresh-cut fir trees with colorful ornaments and hanging hand-stitched stockings above the fireplace. Santa's toy shop was was also a wall of activity. The elves were building the last few toys and checking to make sure each one worked properly. One insisted each each. The toy was carefully wrapped and fixed with a bow before it was sent off to the loading hall. In the garage, Santa's sleigh was getting a tune up the flesh bells were being attached to the lever harness. His team of reindeer were confirming their route and wall and the wall around getting and getting the last minute fly practice in before the big night. Even Miss Claus was busy baking cookies for the elves and sewing mittens new mittens for Santa's suit. School was out for the holidays and no one was more excited than Eddie, a young elf who lived at the end of Candy Cane Lane. A few weeks had been very tiring for the little elf, who had been researching, researching for the school Christmas concert, getting rehearsing for the school Christmas concert, getting photos with Santa, and behaving his very best at family gatherings. Eddie was looking forward to spending lazy mornings in his pajamas watching his favorite Christmas movies with his family and going on adventures with his best friends, Berkey and Corky. Young reindeer fur was white as, as snow and answers that shimmered in the sun. One morning, Eddie woke up to see a thick blanket of freshly fallen snow outside. He quickly pulled on his boots and threw on his coat, barely zipping it up before dashing out the door. Sparky was already outside, diving into the deep snow piles and re-emergencing like a submarine in a sea of white frosting. Eddie and Sparky ran down the home unplugged sidewalks to see if their friends next door wanted to build a snowman fo snowman fort with them. Sorry, we can't, said their neighbor. With a sigh, it was their photo time with Santa, and squeaky green elves weren't allowed outside in their fancy clothes. Eddie and Sparky didn't want to waste a beautiful snow day, so they started building the snowman. By the time they were inside to warm up 
at lunch, they had built a whole snow village. After a quick bite to eat, Eddie and Sparky wandered over over the bar- to the barns to see if their reindeer friends wanted to go on an adventure with them inside Enchant. They got there as well. Uh, the young fawns were too busy practicing their final exams. Eddie let out a big sigh, send, sending a puff of steam into the chilly afternoon air. All of their friends were so busy. As they were leaving the barn, a shiny reflection caught Eddie's attention. It was a, a coach on a silver whistle hanging from the barn door. He got an idea and grinned. If Donner can't use his whistle, flying practice will have to be canceled, said Eddie. He quickly poured some soap in, into the whistle and then he hid behind the snowbank where they eagerly waited. Donner arrived shortly after to grab his whistle. When he blew it to signal the start of practice, instead of, a, uh, instead of a loud tweet, a million bubbles flew ever, about everywhere. Eddie and Sparky giggled with delight, but unluckily for Eddie, Donner found another old whistle in the barn, and flying lessons didn't get canceled after all. <clears throat> Eddie and Spar- Sparky snuck away from the barn and turned down the, the cobblestone street. As they passed by Miss Claus' open, Claus open kitchen door, their tummies rumbled as the scent of freshly baked gingerbread w- wafted towards them. Hoping they would, they would get some to help decorate, Eddie and Sparky walked eagerly into the kitchen, only to be shrewdled right back out. I have too much baking to do. I don't have time to play right now, said Miss Claus, as she brushed off a toot of gray hair from her face, leaving a a streak of flour across her cheek. While Miss Claus peered over her next recipe, Eddie got an idea. Eddie quickly snatched the sugar sugar and salt containers off the counter. If Miss Claus doesn't have any sugar to bake with, she'll have time to play with us, he said as he dumped out the sugar and quickly replaced it with salt. They slipped the containers back on the counter and scurried around the corner to wait. Ugh, said Miss Claus. Several minutes later, as she tasted the overly salty dough, Eddie burst into laughter. What? with his clever brain, but stopped apparently when Miss Claus reached for an extra bag of sugar from the back of her pantry and continued her baking frenzy. Back outside, Eddie slumped down onto a bench, frustrated. Sparky rested his head on Eddie's shoulder, letting out a deep sigh. The evening air was turning a dusty pink, and the vests and the street lamps came on and began to cast shadows across the snowy streets. It was the end of the day, and all the elves had gone to their homes. Suddenly, Eddie had an idea. Let's sneak into the workshops. There there, there ought to be lots of new toys in there. We can borrow some to play with, Eddie. Whispered to, Eddie whispered to Sparky excitedly. Quietly, they tiptoed into the loading hall, and crawled under the um, mini belt until they were inside Santa's workshop. Early the next morning, Harold, the she- yep, chief elf, arrived to load up the present. One by one, one by one, they began to check off Santa's list until all the gifts were tucked away inside Santa's velvet gift bag. When they, f- when they had finished. All the elves began to celebrate, except for Harold, who was scratching his bald head and peering at the list with a puzzled look on his face. Where are the rest of the presents, he asked, suddenly looking around, around the room. Where are, we are missing six or eight of them, he cried, and the elves sprang into action, searching high and low. Harold paced back and forth until Santa arrived in the loading hall. What's the matter, Santa asked his dear old friend. As Harold explained Santa's bushy white brows began to crease, 
together with concern. We are missing eight presents. We've got to look everywhere for them. There isn't enough time to make new ones. What will we do? Christmas is ruined. Well, he sobbed as he buried his head into his hands. The hall felt silent as the elves looked to see how Santa would react. After a pause, he cleared his throat. Well, the presents are out here, so we just have to find them, Santa said simply as he handed the hand crease to Harold. Let's hold an emergency town meeting first, tomorrow morning. We'll need everyone's help if we want to find the missing presents in time. Harold spread the word. The elf dashed up to the workshops, pulling paper, pulling out paper, pens, glitter, glitter group. By the time the sun set, every lamppost and shop window displayed with scowling posters was sent his important announcement. The next morning, all of Christmas Town gathered in the town square, glancing at the clock tower and anxiously looking over their list of things to do. Santa climbed to the top of the step and looked out at the crowd, his hope in his eyes. I know you all have so much to do and that your time is precious, but so are the children on my list. Eight presents have gone missing, and I thought of not being able to give them to Give some of them their presents. This year breaks my heart, he said softly. The square was silent, and the, uh, as the elves looked to Santa, does anyone have time to help me search for the missing present before Christmas? A hand shot up in the air. I can help, shouted a plump little elf from within the ground. Me too, cried another. His hands everywhere began popping up and in the air, volunteering to help Santa search for the missing presents. As they j- jammed their shopping list onto into their pockets and organized into a search party, the elves quickly forgot about their busy shuttle and focused on saving Christmas instead. In no time at all, elves were scattered all over t- Ham determined to find the missing present. The toys could be anywhere. If they if they couldn't be found in time, what was Santa going to do? One group of elves decided to search the snowy fields, toyed and chant, and found the newly built snow fort. They became so excited exploring and playing the fort, they nearly missed a toy airplane from and Amelia that was hidden in one of the tunnels. Another began to search the shops around the, along the main street. When they reached the bakery, they, they decided to stay warm with some hot c- hot cross buns. They found a toy train from Tommy and lo- lined up on the window sill. The elf were having so fun, so much fun searching together, they nearly forgot what the day what day it was, Christmas Eve. Everyone gathered back in the town square and looked on it on with excitement as the missing toys were brought back to Santa and packed onto his sleigh. The clock tower, tower chimed loudly, signaling it, it was time for Santa to go. Oh no, cried Cheryl. Oh no, cried Harold. We're still missing just blocks. Oh, a wave of disappointment watched, washed across the cloud. Suddenly, Eddie popped out his head out of the clock tower window. Oh, did you mean these? He asked, holding out the blocks, innocently not knowing the trouble he had he had caused. I see you found the other toys I borrowed to play with, he said with a nervous giggle. Well, the elves ran in the sled and helped the reindeer into the, their harness. Harold told Eddie all that happened over the last few days. Eddie hung his, dug his toe into the snow, his pointed ears glowing red. I'm sorry, Santa. I just wanted something to play with. Everyone was so busy getting ready for Christmas that no one had time to have 
had time to have any fun. What's the point of holidays if you're not going to enjoy the time with each other? Asked the little elf. Santa paused for a moment, looking thoughtfully at the crowd of smiling faces as the friends shook hands and laughed together. I, I know, you know, Eddie, I don't think you caused any trouble at all, Santa said as he scooped the little elf on, on into his arms. I think you may have helped us find the best gift of, uh, gift of all this Christmas. You helped us find the time to be together with those we love. Eddie looked at the crowd gathered together, and his heart swelled with joy. When Santa set him down, he and Sparky scrambled off to join their friends. All of Christmas town began to cheer and wave goodbye to Santa as he flew off into the starry night. Merry Christmas, whispered Eddie. And suddenly, he had an idea. The end. So, I wonder what the idea is. So... Hope you guys like this book. See you all next time. Goodbye.